couple logistic things in case you're wondering why I'm doing what I'm doing. The, the purpose of today is to help you ponder what you could do with your new device that you couldn't do with your current one. I'm going to talk about what stays the same and what's different. There's a handout if you want it. I'll also send out a link to this Google slide presentation as well. Uh, just some logistics. First of all, if you're wondering, like, why aren't you using the projector that's there when there's one there, uh, the plan right now is to get several new projectors. For those teachers that are looking to keep their smart boards or keep the projection set up, uh, this projector is two or three times brighter. You notice all the lights are on, and you can still read it. In addition, it has the ability for me to wirelessly use my new computer, regardless of how I have it set up, you know, keyboard or not keyboard, to use my computer directly to the projector. The, the technology basically works like this. I'm basically streaming from this device directly to the projector. It has nothing to do with wireless. By wireless, I mean that, like, internet MLC guest. So if I'm looking to do you know, a smart no notebook file or something like that, I can still write on it like normal. The lag time is really, really short. I'm not going to say there's none, but I'll say it's under a second. It's not noticeable between you and the board, which is kind of neat. If I'm taking an annotating PDFs or whatever it might be, like for my PhD class, I have the ability in real time to just kind of take this and, and directly write on whatever I'm looking for. I'll talk about other ways to use the pen and other stuff in just a minute. But in case you're wondering, why am I doing this and not this? It's not that I couldn't use this, but I couldn't use it the way I wanted to demo for you. Because I don't, I don't want to be tied to wires just for the sake of what we're doing here. Uh, I wanted to start off with what stays the same. Uh, Every desktop app, and I mean every, every desktop app that you feel like you really need for teaching, you can still use. Like, so if you like using Smart Notebook, use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. Uh, if all of the Office programs, if you're used to using Word and PowerPoint and Excel and other things like that, it's still there. It's not that you have to migrate to Google or anything like that with this new machine. This is a full computer with the width of a tablet. So this has the full hard drive. It's basically a solid state drive that everything will work a little bit faster within it. Whatever browser you like to use from the past, you can still use it now. So if you're a Chrome user, use it. If you're somebody who likes to use Firefox or whatever, it still works the same way. Uh, administrative rights to your machine. So it's not that, hey, I want to put this program on for early childhood. I need to take it to network services because I don't have the password to get onto it. Just like your laptop, nothing is changing in that. And then storage of files. All of the options you have now will still be available. I'll show this a couple different ways. But in general, when you're docked in your, in your office, and basically the only thing that's going to change is instead of having like this you dock onto a station, you have one cord that magnetically connects to your computer on the side. It's kind of like if you've ever seen an Apple uh, MacBook or something like that. On the other end is all of the other power, like, hey, you want to have three more USB, two more USB things, your wired internet, your power, and other things like that. The reason I show you this is if, if you are saving stuff like you should, in places where you can access it, like your iDrive or your Google Drive, it still is available. In addition to that, I'm going to show you a, a feature that you will have when you get your new device. I have the ability, I have the ability to access my wind data, my iDrive, anywhere I have the internet. Not just on this device. Jeff. Question on, on uh, you talked about uh, iDrive and stuff. You have to be hardwired to be able to get that? For me to have the hardwired iDrive, I need to be wired. I have the ability to access everything that I want through the internet from this, and I have the ability I have the ability today, and you will in the future, to throw things onto MLC storage through the internet. Is that your question? Did I answer your question? Well, yeah, but that's not, I don't, we won't have that immediately. You'll have it as soon as you have your, really? okay. so that's I, new. I'll, that's that, new that'll new. be a new thing, yep. So I'll go back to why I was here. I said, what stayed the same? 
if, if you're used to, you go to your file structure, you find the iDrive over here, it's, it's the same thing. You can still drag, you can still find it, you can still save things the exact same way. You can go to your classroom, hook on the wire, pull up the file the exact same way you did in the past. If that's what you'd like to do, it will still work that way. Okay. In addition, I had showed you, you'll have the ability to access your MLC files through the cloud. It also doesn't change the ability that you have to use Google Drive. Once again, one of the strengths of Google Drive is infinity space is pretty big. And if you use a lot, a lot of video, technically you're going to get cut off at network services. I'll, I'll be naughty and say you really aren't going to get tech cut off, but you're just going to fill up more hard drives that MLC owns. So if you have massive files, I throw them into here. I think I've shown you a bunch, a bunch of you like the power of something like Google is that I have the ability, I showed you this photos thing before, like every photo I've ever taken in my entire life from the time I was married and we bought a digital camera to today is all in Google Photos and I can access it at all times from all devices everywhere. There's a lot of alls there and that's true. It doesn't mean I still don't back it up on my, I have a hard drive at home, I still do that because there's times where Google isn't all that. but. Uh, any questions on things that you know, you're used to up through backups? Anything up here that you're worried that won't be the same, but I said it'll be the same? Go ahead. There's not a, a DVD drive on there? There is not. If we make use of that, can we just talk to network services about getting that? So that's the answer I'm supposed to give you, yes. No. That sounds provocative. No. <laughs> oh, no, yes. It, it does not have it. it. When you dock it in your office, it won't have it there either. If it's something that you want, then yes, you'll have this additional USB drives, and you would do a, a detachable, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, in addition, if you look at the back of the machine, and I'm here's the show and tell part, I'd love for you to touch, hold, open. This is Jim Grunwald's machine. Uh, the reason he couldn't be here right now is he had some major dental emergency things going on that this morning he, he looked terrible. He didn't get any sleep last night. He said it's either crown or something where it's just really, really bad. He would much rather be here than where he's at. I think he's probably at home under lots of painkillers right now. But I give this to you because I'd like you to just open it, touch it, detach it, see if you can hack into Jim's passwords or whatever you'd like to do with it. But at least you could say you've touched it. Not that it's sacred, hallowed chalice or something like that, but uh, on the back of the machine, there's a, there's a space for a, a micro SD slot. You probably will never use it because what, is, what the plan is that everybody is going to have a fairly large micro SD card in there automatically so that if you save something on your, on your actual device, not in the cloud or anything like that. You save it on this device, and the device were to break, you would still be able to take the card out, and you'd have another backup, which I think makes sense. I don't know the amount of space. I don't really even know the amount of space of this hard drive. I just know it's, it's sufficient. I mean, it's large. The card itself, I don't know the numbers for it, but I'm just talking about basic files. You put it on your machine. You just save it to my documents, and you don't ever move it. You'd have automatic backup of your hard drive to that. Here's why I think you're here. Uh, you want to kind of see the machine and what it can kind of do. Uh, first of all, uh, let's just play the game of old versus new. You're in your classroom. You put this on the docking station and it goes You've got to shut it off and turn it back on. How, what, what's your time frame? How long does that take? how many times you have to turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making this up. When yeah. I really force myself to get to class 10 minutes early on, when I'm going to a, a weird setup classroom because I'm, I'm worried about how much time that takes. And obviously, you have good and bad stories with it. Not everything Dave Sharf is terrible about the old device, but I'm going to make it sound that way. Uh, but I've, I'm not brave enough to time it right now 
But the worst case scenario is you hold the power button or it's completely off to completely on. I mean completely cold off to on in 30 seconds. Easily. And, and moving it from your office into a docking station like that. Instant. There's, you're not playing around with like, well, in the, in the display settings, I've got to have, like, works. 30 seconds. Uh, all devices, if you just sleep them and, and wake them up, even the old, like this device, it works fast if it's slept correctly. Like, not everything was bad with it. Uh, the kickstand, that's kind of a funky thing on here. It might be the most, uh, the biggest adjustment that you need. It kind of pulls out of the bottom. Uh, I think some of you will use this computer most of the time like a laptop. And I'm just kind of detaching and, and reattaching this keyboard. The keyboard, I guess I'll walk around with that first. The keyboard has like some magnets on the bottom. These, these pins connect it. It's not something that you have to tell it to look for the keyboard. As soon as it's attached, it knows that it's there. Back to my demonstration. So if this is in your, in your office, obviously you can go whatever angle that you're looking for, higher, lower. But what I, I'm starting to grow to like with the kick stand, I don't like how me metallic, like it's, it's not real soft. But what I really like about it is if I'm on my couch or I'm just laying flat on my back, I can't get this to the angle I want. And you have every angle with this. By every angle, I mean you don't have to have the kick stand. You can you know, move it like this, have, have your computer be flat, have it be, I think you get the idea. It depends on how you want it to work. But for me, that's something that I really, really enjoy. Uh, something that I didn't realize I would use as much as I do is the camera. Uh, this is basically like a tablet. It's, it has all the power of an iPad. I'm just clicking on this. Or I'm going to basically show you how the camera works for it. I guess in my demonstration, I got rid of something. So here's my camera. Everything that you know you would do with an iPad or a cell phone or something like that, you can do here. You don't want to be in a picture. <laughs> Too bad. Hey, you get the idea. So here's my picture. Uh, I wanted to show you that what it takes is really high quality. It, it beats my iPad in, in pixels. I mean, like the numbers are, are really solid. What I liked about this machine is I didn't realize how many times I wanted pictures of, of students doing work or explaining something. Like, for example, uh, EFE 1 took place a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, whatever it was. And I videotaped every lesson that every student gave that didn't involve little children. So I would take the video, just put this here, and at the same time, take notes in a Google Doc about how they taught. And that's not saying, oh, how great am I? But you have the ability to multitask in a way that's even better than what most tablets can do. So I put this in a spot in my room where I could take Ms. Schmadlock as she's t teaching her lesson as I'm typing notes. And then instantly, that, that video file is on your hard drive. And then for me, I would put it into Google Photos or YouTube or whatever you want to do with it. For me, it's replaced having, hey, I need a different device to video while I do something else. I didn't expect I'd. Uh, yeah. Split screen, like you see the video on one side. I can split screen. I don't because usually, for me, I'm just recording. It's good, and I just leave it that way. It's just happening. Right, right. Obviously, if you're playing the game of I want to, I want to turn, kind of like this thing is turning and recording me, then you probably are going to split your screen. Yeah. There's something that I was going to say, but now I don't remember. But. Uh, detachable keyboard, I showed you that. I don't know if you're going to love the pen. So I got a couple months of trying out this device because I wanted to anticipate pros and cons. I think some of you will say this is one of the biggest pros, and I think some of you will say this is one of the biggest cons. Uh, it depends on whether or not you make use of it. It does magnet to the side on both sides of your device, and it's strong. I, I can't toss it and make it. But it, it's, it's, it's strong. Like, I, I can't shake it off of the machine. It's good. But with that being said, you have to really think about how you're going to use it. The reason I say I'm not sure how much you're going to love it is I love it, 
while I'm teaching. So if I'm in, this, in a smart notebook lesson and I want to do it not docked, I can write on the screen really, really well without a lot of lag. I can do the same thing with PDFs and other stuff like that. I can use it to highlight various areas to move around. If you're somebody who doesn't anticipate writing onto documents or onto student work, it's just there. Steve, you want to comment on whether you love it or hate it? Or The magnet must be better on the Surface Pro 4 than 3 because I lose it all the time. Sure. The magnet is very good. Uh, I throw this in, a, in my laptop back, backpack, and it does come off. So it's usually at the bottom of my bag if I forget. I think some of you, it'll, sounds bad, but it'll stay someplace and sit in your office for a month. But this is more than just a piece of plastic. So here's where I'm gonna kind of do the, hey, did you realize not only can it write, the backside is an eraser, so anything that you write can be erased as well. Uh, if I take this and just kind of prove my point, I've set it up so that when I click once, it opens up whatever program I want one click to mean. So in this case, I use Chrome more than I use anything else on my computer. So one click means go from wherever I was to just a clean open up Chrome. Uh, for me, two clicks is OneNote. I'm not going to show you OneNote today because I think it'll just muddy some waters. But you can make one click, two click, three clicks, be whatever you want. So if you're one of those that, hey, it takes me 14 seconds to find the English comp app that's on here the way that I want it, make one click, get there, and you don't have to fumble through this or that or the other. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do the same thing. That's just showing you that the pen has power. It, it's pretty cool, but I'm not convinced in three years all of you will say it was indispensable. But it is one of the things that makes this device shine if you're watching the commercials. They will highlight the pen quite a bit. Uh, touch screen. Uh, this touch screen is as good as any uh, iPad or anything you've ever used. What I mean by that is everything is touch. Everything is zoomable. Everything is zoomable. So here's MLC's website, whatever you want to do, like you have those web pages or those things where you've got to get to that minuscule area on it and you can't click it. Like this is as good as the, the latest iPad as the iPad Pro. The pixels and touch spots, there's more on here than there is on the newest iPad. It, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, power off. This is kind of funky if, if you've already passed around the computer, but it's like, where is the lid to this thing? Well, the keyboard is a lid. I think you caught on to that. When you close the screen, it, it sleeps it just like you would expect. You still have the ability on the bottom corner to go to power and sleep or shut down or restart. None of that changes from the past. What can I answer about just the big issues? I shouldn't say issues, the big features of this device. Anything that you need me to demo a different way? Good, Scott. How long is the charging life? Or after you charge, how long is it like? So I'll put it here. You ruined my segue, but it's okay. Uh, Bob Martins and I played the game of how bad can we make it? So like if, how many things can we download at the same time and just leave it downloading and burn it as worst as we can? And the worst we could get was three hours. The worst we could get is three hours. The average, I would say, is six. And if all you're doing is casual browsing on the internet, you can get eight. You could probably get nine. They would say eight to 10. I would say you get six. If you're playing the game of, how long do you get in here without a charge? Two hours if you're lucky. I'm uh, moving around with my cable in one hand and the right. in the other all the time because mine doesn't hold a charge. Right. So you can prop, you know, most people are now in their fourth year of this device and they're getting maybe, maybe an hour. So here's the kind of specs. Uh, if you want more, I'm going to send you this features. You can click on the links and you can find, if you want to know exactly the number of megapixels and exactly all those things, that's not the purpose of today. Here's the front diagram by Windows. Just scan. Is there something you want me to explain? Go ahead, Jeff. Yes, exactly. Yep. 
to, to show something else. Like, I do have the ability to, let's just see if I can do something here. I do have the ability to send wireless sound from one place to the other. So, like, I have the ability to kind of show, I guess that's not a good, like, if I had sound with this, like, you could hear it through this if you wanted to. You get the idea. Uh, however, if you're only looking to do, like, video from here to projector, you're still, and I'll get to this later or skip it, but you're still better off being docked. Like, docked audio, docked video, whatever it might be, is still going to work better. The question that, oh, Scott. Did you say you did use that for micro teaching? That one? Yes. Did it pick up sound very well? Pretty good. Microphone is okay? Pretty good. It is not as good as what this is going to be when I have a microphone on me and another microphone on me, but yeah. So for example, if I was doing micro teaching and I was taking your daughter, from my distance to you, it's, it's good. It's not great, it's good. If, if the teacher is quiet, they'll still be quiet. But it's better than this. By this, it's better than this. But if they don't have a mic on them, I would say there's almost no system that's great because they're not being amplified directly to the device. A common question for people is, uh, there's only one USB? I don't know if that causes a problem or not. Some people in a different section said, I, I need it for my mouse. Okay, well, in your office, you'll have three or four places to put USBs. When you're in your classroom, you won't have that. You'll have one. So I don't know if you need three USB. I mean, you'll have this USB. I'm not sure if you need three USB. I mean, there's workarounds with various things with it. I only say it because it, somebody else asked a question about USB 3 means it's faster. There's one port by default. The other question that came up was, uh, so this is a fancy dancy mini display port, but I want to go to St. John's somewhere and they only have VGA. Am I still going to be able to present? And the answer is yes, but just like with other devices, you basically need the adapter from here to whatever it is that you need. There will definitely be several of them in network services. I don't know the system of Will there be one for divisions? Or if you know, Jeff Wickman goes out all the time, he just has one? I mean, that just makes sense. Do I need one every day? No. You showed us the uh, dock before. Yep. And I'm assuming that plugs in to power. Yep, so let's get there. So your question was basically, let's explain the, the docking stuff. So. Inside your office is this docking station. I think I showed a portion of it. The backside has all the, the power and other things that you're looking for with it. Uh, this just magnet, magnetically connects to your device. It gives you internet. It gives you all the things that are connected. The other option is just like with your current laptop, you have the ability to just give it power like you're just at some, some location and you just want to build up your power. This magnetically connects. Notice there's nothing else connected to it, so this is just pure power. What I'm less, I know where you're going, I think. What I'm less familiar with, because I just got this today, so I don't, this is what is planned to be in the classroom. And the reason why they're going to something like this instead of the dock is because obviously you can't connect it in. Uh, the plan with it is if anybody comes to MLC to speak, you're going to have one connection to it. You're not going to have to take out three cords and reattach four of them to make it work. What I'm not super familiar with, because I haven't played around with this, is the other questions like, can a student device wirelessly go to here to there? Because I think that's the question that I'm asking, at least. And I think the answer is it should, but I don't know the answer. The other thing that I know right now is, uh, right now this is not a powered USB connection to your laptop. So when you're in your classroom right now, your laptop will not, or your, your new service pro, whatever you want to call it, will not keep recharging. To me, it made me go, mm, but I, 
just saw this yesterday. I'm just a messenger and trying to make it excited to some extent. Uh, if you have a TV in your room, uh, an HD TV or whatever you want, whatever you have in there, uh, this is the dongle that connects in the back. You can have an extension or not. And basically, it gives you the ability to do what I'm doing here. So I have the ability through my settings to connect to a wireless display. And right now, it knows that the only thing that I can connect to is this projector. If you wanted your TV to do the same thing, you would have that connected to the back of your TV, turn on the TV like you normally would, and you would look for that. What some of you, many of you have to think about is, where do you want to see your classroom go in time? And I make no guarantees about May, but some of you said, I want my classroom to eventually move to a TV. Then you probably will never have the in-between phase of that projector because your goal is to change that. If you're saying, I want to keep my smart board because I use it for this, that, or the other, uh, eventually projectors will improve. I think that makes a lot of sense. And what I'm doing here from here to the projector will be your setup for the next two, four, 10 years. I'm not sure how long till it would be replaced. Kind of makes sense. I'm getting that like dazed look. Uh, <laughs> it's getting to be afternoon. Uh, the backside. Headphone headset jack on the top. I think most of you can play around with that and be able to see it. Uh, the reason I got my device earlier is because I whined. I don't know if that's the right word. But I also wanted to just play the game of like, oh, cool. I wanted to play the game of what can I make this device do wrong so that I can anticipate what you might make happen in, in August or September? I maybe put that the wrong way. But here's what I found. Uh, just like I did there, if you do something kind of funky with your computer or you put it in a weird sleep pattern, like for example, maybe your computer is set that after five minutes it goes to sleep. If you don't touch this device, it's just like any other device, it's gonna go to sleep. And if this goes to sleep, it's not gonna connect to there and to there. If you're hardwired, obviously that's different. Okay, so obviously the, the setups would be, I need to make sure my power setup is so that I don't lose it. Uh, a suggestion would be think about sleep versus hibernate without a lot of detail. Hibernate basically means like it uses a little more power but it boots up a lot quicker. Uh, here's the two worst things that I found. Uh, I really wanted this computer that every time I closed this screen, it went to sleep perfectly and woke up perfectly and it doesn't. Uh, Microsoft is trying to make it work better and they've done, I think, four patches and it's getting there. But I would say 90% of the time when I close it, it opens up and does well. If I go to the corner and say, I want to sleep in my machine, it always works well. I just wanted it to work well with even ha out having to do the work around with it. Uh, I talked about the 30 second number. The worst case scenario is you open up your machine, you press the power button and nothing happens. The, the workaround is just keep holding your power button. It's kind of like on this device, I'm sure some of you have been there where you hold it to the side and it turns it off. The same thing with this is hold the button on top and no worse than 30 seconds you'll have your machine back on. So that was the worst thing I found on this machine is locks up, it's not showing anything, I'm pressing power, it's doing nothing, well hold power longer and it works just fine. Uh, battery life, I think it, because of all it does, I couldn't get eight to 10 hours. It's not terrible, but I thought it could even be better. Uh, wireless teaching uh, using the internet. Uh, basically what I'm saying here is there's no lag if I'm trying to go from just writing on my screen to this, very little lag. But if I'm trying to show a YouTube video, it lasts about a second and then it starts going <laughs> Because there's a limited bandwidth between this device to the projector. It has nothing to do with you know, New Ulm or MLC has, doesn't have fast enough internet. It, you can't send the data, like it's too much data over the current technology to send it to the machine. So if you're showing the YouTube video, doc, show it some other way. Um, I'm just curious, how, oh, Dave. But a TV is different, like if you send it to the TV, or no? It's no different. Exactly yeah, if you wanted to show a video, hardwire yourself. And it has, no, once again, it has nothing to do with internet, it has to do with how much data can be sent. I've done it where it's fine. Like for example, 
I've watched Mark Madness from my machine, from this to my home TV, no problem, but it's inconsistent. It's kind of cool. You can watch all the games from this device to my TV at home, put this wherever I want it. Anyways, I'm just curious, how many of you have Windows 10 on some other device? I think most of you were told not to do it on this device, right? Okay. I think there's a learning curve with it. I don't think it's as bad as some of the changes from one Windows to the next. Like I said at the very beginning, if you're used to uh, the place that you click on things is, here's your main screen, and you're one of those that works off of 80 icons, you can still do it that way. I think it's like a cross between Windows 7 and Windows 8, you can use whichever features you prefer, yep. or both. If I click on the, the bottom right, this is called the live tiles. If you want more information in May, I'll give you more if you'd like. But these are, like, this is designed to be a tablet. So if these are the main programs that you use, it should be easy to touch with a bigger area to touch. So basically what you can do is you can take any of these programs. Here are all the programs that you have. I'll backtrack and show you what I just did. If you want to see all of your applications, you can click on all apps and see them this way. And I can take any of these and just pin them to, they call this the start menu. So I can have anything I want. I can make it be bigger, smaller, whatever you're looking for. Where I think this device does pretty well that I wasn't expecting is if you look at the bottom left part of my screen, where it's blinking into that white box right here, uh, I really like this search feature more than I thought I would. This is the Cortana search bar. So if I want to get to Word, I don't look for it in my file structure. I just start typing a couple letters. And it knows all the things that I've done with WOR. So Bible class that I led at St. Paul's and the desktop app and other things like that. If you're looking for a certain file, like I'm looking for my linear algebra smart notebook thing for tomorrow, just start typing. There's nothing wrong with, as Steve said, this is like Windows 7. Like you can get everything you want or just start typing. This is also where you see in the commercial, like you could technically talk to your machine and have it find stuff too. That's not the purpose of today, but I think you get the idea. And it's gonna look through every last portion of all of your file structures. Um, just to kind of show you what I'm doing in real time. If I, if I pull the screen from the right-hand side, it opens up all the settings. That's kind of what I did quickly before to get to more settings. If I don't know where to find something like, hey, where do I get to where Windows updates are? I just start typing a couple letters down here and like, I don't look in the settings anymore. I just type in a couple letters of what I want and it does it. Pinning, live tiles, multiple desktops. I'm gonna click on this here. And basically what that does is it just shows you everything that you have open in kind of a, a neat format. Not all of you are gonna use this feature, that's completely fine. If you looked at the bottom, you also have the ability to have it act like six or seven computers at the same time. So you might say, why would I ever do that? Well, maybe you have school stuff and you have home stuff and you wanna work in separate environments some people use it, not all of you will, that's completely fine. If I drag from the left hand side and wait, it does the same thing. So as with most Windows things, if you do know how to do it one way, there's probably a second way to do it and it will work better for some and not as well for others. Issues, questions, things to ponder. I think I showed you everything on here, student docking, wireless projectors, and other stuff. What you're gonna to have to decide yourself is if you want all of the features of Windows, you have to log in with Windows as well. And currently, you have a, a Google account. Right now, I have my, my Hotmail account and my Google account talk to each other so that, for example, on my calendar on here, I can see everything put together. You have to decide, is that really worth your time? Are you really gonna use it for those features? But if you want it, like, hi, what do I have for two o'clock an appointment? If you want all of those kinds of features, you'd have to be able to do that there. I talked about clickable pen, Cortana, App Store, all that kind of stuff. I 
think everything else is pretty much, you just have to try it yourself. Big issues. Where are you sweating right now? What worries you? So here are the dates. Uh, the plan is that you'll get your device the week after school is done. The dates for that is Monday the 16th through Thursday the 19th. There'll be another email that comes out with all the specific times. The plan is that there'll be morning sessions, there'll be afternoon sessions. If you're one of those that's planning on going to SEM for graduation because your brother's graduating, then we'll make sure you can get out on that Monday or that Tuesday. I'm just talking hypothetical people here. Uh, you'll have to at least do a basic training thing we don't really want you to leave with your device and not even know how to turn it on or get to whatever you're looking for. However, we're looking to also do extended, like, additional features. So maybe you're intrigued by wireless teaching and you need to try stuff. Maybe you're intrigued by whatever it might be, more about Windows 10. The plan would be that at least May 19th or maybe some of these dates will do dual duty. One of us will take basics. One of us will take advanced. Network services will be there, too. Um, as well as in August. I don't get that detached from email. You can always contact me with those kinds of things. But the purpose of today is to make you ponder, hmm, do I need to, am I thinking about a different kind of setup in my classroom for next year? Are there things I want to tinker with this summer while I have a little bit of brain power to do stuff with it? And then as you get your device in May, there will also be a follow-up on when do you want your classroom and your office switched over to everything new system away from the old system? The last encouragement isn't on the screen here, but you got an email is, this would be a good time to think about where do you have all your stuff stored? Like, if you're very faithful with putting stuff on the iDrive and that's the only place where it is, you're probably ready for your machine today. If you have some stuff randomly on the C drive and on some place else, and you get the idea with it, then it's going to take you a little bit of time to get everything where you need to have it. I believe the plan would be you don't have to give up this machine until the end of the summer if you don't, didn't really want to. But at some point, obviously, your office and your classrooms will be set up for the new system when you'd like it set up within reason. I think those are the big picture things. Other issues? When were those computers? Four years ago. So I think that's the, uh, the about timetable is about a four-year cycle. If you're like me, it doesn't mean that the one that you got was new when you got it. Like mine, this is Wendler's computer. And right. <clears throat> yep. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. If you have things you want to ask me right now or email me, that's fine. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your meal. And we don't need to spend the last 10 minutes just for the sake of spending it, because I think you're about tired and done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.